Hey guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. So this is the second part we're going to be looking at the Delphine Cinematic Collection 1 3 Amiga games and 1 Mega Drive game. Look forward to this one, let's get stuck into it right now. Okay guys, let's have a look at the next Amiga cart. It's mostly Amiga anyway. Um, so this is the Delphine Software Cinematic Collection 1. Always hints at a setting collection. Not really sure we will though see a setting collection. This is cart number 4 in the sort of computer um, sort of a collections. Obviously there's one console game on here, so a little bit of controversy I guess, but it's fine. I don't mind. Four cinematic classics from the master storytellers of Delphine Software. So yeah, you've got um, Another World Flashback, um, which is obviously the Mega Drive version, and you've got the yeah, sort of point and click games Future Wars and Operation Stealth. Um, so interesting to see how these actually work on the D-pad um, without a mouse. Now it was a little bit awkward even with a mouse, so it's always going to be awkward even with a D-pad anyway. But it's still going to be interesting to see how they perform uh, on Evercade, so I'm really looking forward to seeing that. I'm really looking forward to this game, it certainly adds a little bit more variety to um, Evercade. Some point and click games, Flashback, which is definitely a classic, and Another World 2, which is a complete classic. We've got the, the lovely cart, as you can see here. Let's get it out of the box, making tons of noise. We've got the lovely cart, which is rated 12, I guess. Interesting stuff, quite nice, let's put that to the side. We've even got some kind of poster included. Always love when you get these, so it's like, oh, it looks like an, an, another world. Oh, their world. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, you've got another world poster, which is kind of cool. It's nice. And on the other side, oh, yeah, on the other side, it is Future Wars Time Travelers. And some kind of nice poster there, which is kind of cool, I guess. That's quite quite nice. Original design concepts. So that's quite cool that they've included that. I always like those posters rather than stickers, I guess. Um, so yeah, let's have a quick look through the manual before we get started. Now, this is massively important, guys. These games will most likely need a firmware update if you haven't updated your firmware, especially on the original sort of handheld. And make sure you read this uh, manual because there's a lot of uh, in-depth controls with these games, there's a little bit about Amiga, there's a lot of, definitely a lot of things you'll need to know before you even try to get stuck in. I would not recommend trying to sort of go blind into these games, especially the point and click ones, because it's pretty confusing. I think the games are pretty clunky, um, if you sort of look at the information here. So definitely read up. I would even recommend having a look through some of the online guides from maybe way back uh, in the years because you'll probably need a little bit of help in hand to even get started in some of these games because it's not massively clear what you're supposed to do. So definitely have a wee look uh, at some of the guides just at least to get you started. Um, so Operation Stealth and Future Wars do kind of a have a similar sort of menu system in place, kind of similar. So you play John Glames in this version. In the American version, you were actually playing James Bond uh, in Operation Stealth, which is kind of fascinating, I guess. But obviously, due to licensing, we're not getting that version. So we've got the classic Another World, which will probably, you'll swear a lot playing that one. It's kind of a platformy travel no, trial and error kind of puzzle game, which, yeah, you'll die tons, but you have a little bit of patience, uh, and yeah, obviously pay attention to the moves, um, even watch a few walkthroughs as well, just to get you started, because it's not the most obvious game of what you're supposed to do. And finally, we've got Flashback, which isn't the Amiga version, not entirely clear why they didn't go with that, but um, Having looked at the two versions, I think the Mega Drive version is definitely the one to go for. Just obviously creates a little bit of controversy in the fact that they've got a Mega collection on this, this front of the, the cart here, as you can see at the bottom. But yeah, one of the games is definitely Mega Drive. But you wouldn't really know m much by looking at it, to be honest. But yeah, there's some of uh, the, the moves. You definitely need to pay attention to the moves in Flashback. That does get a little bit confusing. Um, there's a lot of different moves and variations of walking and jumping and running kind of thing and using your gun 
And that's it, there's quite a lot of information there, password, use an item, so that's quite cool. Okay guys, so we're going to have a look on the EXP before we just sort of put it onto the VS, but yeah, word of warning, if you're new to this stuff, definitely do your homework before you get started. Going in blind probably isn't the way to play these games at all. Um, but those that remember these games back in the day and played them, uh, these are classics. They are absolute classics and it's nice that we have them on Evercade now. And certainly, okay, it's only four games, but there's certainly um, a lot of gameplay to be had within these four games. Anyway, let's have a look on the XP. Okay, here we go. Delphine Software Collection, four games, and there we have it. Nice little cover arts there. Let's have a look at Flashback before we get stuck into the VS and look at them in more detail. <laughs> it's also annoying trying to sort of line these up properly in the games. Yeah, don't forget the hollow cube. You'll be a loss without it. Okay guys, so apologies for the delay in getting this video out. Um, obviously with the um, Play Expo and Blackpool and Evercade being there, I thought that was an a great opportunity to go and see the new stuff and meet the guys. Um, so that obviously caused a little bit of delay in getting this video out. But there was also another reason that I delayed it because these games, even though there's only four games, there's a lot to these games and they're not the most pick up and play friendly style games. You have to understand the controls, you need to understand what to do, especially with the point and click games, they're not the most straightforward. Um, so I definitely had to refer to some walkthroughs a few times and I would urge anyone picking these games up if you do get stuck, refer to walkthroughs, there's plenty out there for these games, they've been around for some time, um, so there's plenty of things out there to help you get the most out of these games because there's a lot of decent gameplay here, there's great stories in all four of these games and they're certainly worth uh, investing some time into these games um, to get the most out of them. And what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to be playing through the initial stages of each game, trying to explain how to play them so that you can also get some enjoyment out of them as well. Because um, there's some really decent games here, it's just not the most straightforward. So I'll try and help you and explain things as I go. So without further ado, let's get started with another world. Okay, if you want to skip ahead to the gameplay, um, I'll leave some chapters in the description. Now, Another World is kind of one of the ex early examples from Delphine Software um, for one-player games, and it's a little bit different, um, whereas there's not a lot of instructions on what to do, it's not massively clear on what to do, uh, and basically the game starts off, it's kind of a, you're kind of like some kind of software engineer or something, and you end up um, your place gets hit by lightning and you get sucked into another world. But I'll let you watch the uh, cutscene at the start. If you want to jump it, I'll leave some chapters so you can go straight to the gameplay.
Okay, so don't forget to push up at that particular part. If you just sit and watch, uh, it will just uh, go all the way back to the start again and you'll have to go through that. Um, there are some codes that you can use um, to get to certain parts of each uh, game. Um, but I think for me, save state and save state often. Um, I think that's the first tip I'm going to give you. Make sure you save state and practice all those moves. There's not a heck of a lot of moves in the game um, and certainly pay attention to the manual. There are some tips in there on how to um, use the gun for example. That's actually quite important. Um, now these little monsters, if you get anywhere near them, they will scratch you. They will kill you instantly um, and you could potentially jump over them, which I think I initially did um, in, when I played this game first, which is fine, but it's a bit hit and miss and eventually you will run back and you will just die instantly it's, it becomes almost impossible so take some time out and destroy these um, little creatures by just basically using that kick button just stand still and press the kick button uh, on the controller and just take them out before you actually make progress careful there are ones plopping down from the ceiling overhead um, but the, it is very important it sounds very tedious but honestly take the time to do it it won't take you that long but eventually you'll get to this point you'll get that creature wanting to chase you run the heck the back the way now sometimes the creature will probably catch you before you get anywhere it just depends it seems a little bit hit and miss and trial and error kind of thing but keep running and jump off this ledge and you'll swing all the way back and then just keep running to the right again until you get to this, the, the sort of cut scene to the next sort of stage. But yeah, this whole section, if I'm pretty sure I played this originally. I never even got past this first section, which is bonkers. But it's very trial and error. It's very frustrating. Sometimes it's not that clear what you're supposed to do, as I said. So you kind of have to work it out. And sometimes, yeah, you might want to watch some videos or uh, look at some of the guides online. But yeah, I'll shut up for a minute and you can watch this little cutscene before we get to the next stage. Okay, so at this point all you have to do is press left and right on the D-pad and swing back and forth till eventually the sort of prison cell that you're in will collapse and um, flatten the creature below and then you can make your way or make your escape. Don't forget to pick up the gun because it's massively important. Without it you will get absolutely nowhere fast. Um, but yeah, this game, massive trial and error. And I think the next few screens you probably die numerous times before you um, actually get off this particular part. Because um, the creatures do tend to randomly come out and, and attack you. So there's a one there right at the start which I died at. Just stand and wait at the first screen and just shoot the creature when he comes. And then just keep running um, as far as you can to the next screen where the, the sort of comrade that's with you will attempt to override um the sort of barrier here but yeah there's a few settings on the laser gun there's obviously just press it once it will fire the laser if you hold it down for a few seconds it will create this kind of shield in front of you um if you can see this sort of little ball of white that is massively important for this stage you need to hold it down a few seconds and create that shield to stop the creature from obviously killing you and the the other person that's with you trying to escape and um, there is another setting which i'll go over in a few minutes where you basically hold the button down until you get a big ball and it will destroy some walls but you'll see that in a little minute and um, there is a cut scene here which i'm not entirely sure the point of but yeah it's there Okay, so go to the bottom of this elevator and then just shoot and this will destroy the power um, as you can see there and then go back to the elevator, wait for this fellow to follow you, it is slow as Chico but he's very important in the next couple of uh, sort of screens um, and at this point as I said earlier to um, destroy some walls and doors you need to hold down the fire button and the laser for maybe three or four settings and it will then emit enough power to destroy some certain things as you can see what's happening here but yeah just keep running to the left uh, and 
then you'll eventually get to a, a dead end, so to speak. But this creature will somehow help you and um, manage to uncover a manhole, which you can then escape to the next stage, which is cool. So you kind of have to then roll your way through the, it looks like the sewers or something that you're in. Uh, but yeah, there's options to go left and right. And this is another one, pure trial and error. Don't forget, safe state, safe state at this point, because you'll most likely die. Pretty gruesome. But yeah, there is a way of doing it. It's basically left, then right, right, left, or something like that. But you'll eventually um, get through this. It is kind of tedious, but um, it's only for a few screens. And yeah, please just save state in case you do take the wrong way. Okay, so basically that thing on the left uh, recharges your um, laser gun thingy, um, which is quite important because there are stages that it will just run out and you could get massively frustrated uh, and then your progress is really practically impossible. Um, but yeah, if you do see these stations, make sure you charge and charge possible and maybe just be wary of not to use the gun too much unless you really need to, like here which was useless anyway but anyway so at this point you have to do this massive leap over that uh, sort of chasm and yeah use that to break through the wall Okay, so Another World certainly is something of a classic um, back in the day. It's certainly one of those most recognisable titles, and it's been released on modern formats now as well, um, sort of remastered slightly. It certainly is quite a cool game. Is it a good game? I'm not entirely sure. It's a frustrating game. Certainly not a bad game. Once you understand what you're doing, what uh, what you need to do, how the controls work, ex for example. It is kind of clunky, um, which is probably a recurring theme on some of the games here. But I, I think, given the fact that we've got those safe states, it should take some kind of frustration away from uh, all those deaths that you will probably um, sort of have through the game. It's just something that's, I guess, what the game's all about. A little bit of trial and error, but it's not bad. I, I don't think it's amazing, but it's certainly okay, and it's quite iconic from back in the day. Okay, so moving on to Flashback, which kind of feels like an unofficial sequel to Another World, so to speak. Uh, obviously it isn't, but it kind of feels like that a little bit. Um, and this is definitely, for me, the best game on this collection, hands down. Um, I bought this game back in the day um, from Dixon's, costing me about 45 quid um, on cartridge on the Mega Drive, which was great. I really enjoyed it, never ever got that far, um, because it was quite tough. Without those save states, it's tough to make progress, it kept dying, but I still enjoyed it and I played it a lot.
Okay, so the story of Flashback is kind of a, a little bit like Total Recall, a little bit. Um, given that your memory has been erased and you need to like, regain it back, um, it's obviously been erased for a reason because I think you've uncovered some kind of alien plot, which then kind of reminds me of maybe something like They Live. So th there's a few different sort of styles going on here. But in the first screens, there's not a heck of a lot happening. So what I would suggest to anyone picking this up is practice the moves, practice the running um, and what to do. Because in the heat of the battle, it's very important um, to understand what you're supposed to do. So yeah, push up to jump. Um, and if you hold down the X button and I think and then press up, you will jump across sort of chasms like that. Um, also, B unholsters the gun and X fires the gun. There's a few different sort of rules, but have a good look at the instructions um, and then practice them on these initial screens to get your head around them. If you hold X and push down at the edge um, of these sort of platforms you will go down the way and don't forget to uh, pick up your holocube right at the start as well that's quite important because it's on one of those uh, things that's activating a door or stopping a door from opening and then also if you go into your inventory pressing the start button you can go through it you've got your shield you can take four hits you can recharge that as well through the game and um, but yeah activate press a to select the holocube to have it as you can see in the top right and then activate it by pressing a and you will see this little story Okay, so it's basically yourself telling you that um, you've had your memory erased and you have to meet a certain person um, later on in the game. But yeah, to destroy those robots, just lean down, press down on the D-pad uh, with your gun um, open and just shoot it a couple of times. Once the sort of antenna goes up and you will destroy that. Um, but this sort of leap here, you have to do a running jump which um, is basically holding down the X and pressing right or left on the D-pad, depending on which way you're going, obviously. And then press up just before you get to the edge of that uh, leap, and you will then leap all the way over. There are some more moves which I'll go through as we uh, sort of go through further into the game when it's appropriate to say. Um, but there is one particular move that was a little bit sticky to um, understand. It's not that clear in the manual either how to uh, work this jump. Um, but I'll go over it once the situation actually arises. But the first few stages are just getting used to controls and taking out some bad guys. Okay, so eventually you'll have this um, shield cartridge thing which um, you need to actually charge. Once you find it, you need to charge it before you can actually use it. Um, so what to do is you find one of those charging uh, machines. And there's a few located around each level. Um, don't step over that green stuff because you will vaporise instantly. And you can see I've already been to this section um, before. Um, and you can see those little green sort of things in the bottom. They're like, I don't know what they are, some electrified things. Don't step in them either. Um, don't stop. You can actually run over them and it's fine. But this energy generator will charge your cartridge so that you can then activate the bridge and get over uh, to the next section of the game. You can also charge your shields here as well. If you take a few hits, just put the um, shield into that and it will get it back up to four again. Okay, so as stated earlier, there is a way to reach some of those higher... Uh, ledges that seem a little bit unreachable. I'm not sure what the point of this ledge is to be honest, I've never really worked that out but again what you do is hold down left or right in the d-pad by pressing X at the same time but before you get to the, the end let go of the d-pad, uh, just make sure you're holding down X only and you will eventually then jump automatically at the end of the ledge to reach the higher one. Um, it takes a little bit of practice, but just remember to let go of the D-pad and just keep hold of X. Um, and then eventually you can see here we can activate this uh, cartridge and then we'll have a bridge to go across. Um, but not before we take out this robot. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so this section, um, what you need to do is actually leave one of the stones or drop one of the stones down uh, on one of those uh, activators there. Because um, if you don't, the lift will just remain up and you need something that's on that lift, especially a transponder, I think it's that's for um, one of the characters you meet uh, later on in the level. Um, there is a stone you can see here on the other side of the screen um, on the left here, which is just about there, but you can pick up as well. Just lean down and press the X button and you will pick it up. But as you can see here, quickly run over and pick up the teleporter, sorry, and then you will be able to give that to the character uh, later on in the level who then gives you an ID card which is important to basically finish the level but don't forget pick up that other stone as well they're quite handy um, throughout the level you can actually use them you can throw them to distract guards um, activate things um, it's really up to you you could just blaze through the game take hits or you could try and distract guards and then you can maybe take no hits. I'm kind of a sometimes a little bit clumsy and forget. Now this part here is actually an in-game save, which you can use. Um, but with the save states, it kind of makes that a little bit redundant. But if you, I guess if you haven't uh, say, used the save states, use these as well. You can maybe um, forget and if you die, you will get sort of put back to that stage there. Um, but this part is where we need those key cards. So we have to go find um, that man that's kind of dying and he wants his teleporter to get him out of here and he will then leave a key card down. So we'll go all the way to the, that part and then we'll eventually come back to this little part to finish the level. So basically this guy just wants the teleporter so if you give that to him he will then somehow vanish, teleport out of here and he will then drop a key card which we need to make progress um, through to the next stage. Definitely I found that the, the controls are still a little bit clunky even though I kind of know the buttons to press, I quite often pressed the wrong button which meant it was quite frustrating. I'm not sure if you need to press X to chat to people or press the A button, it, it definitely felt a little bit clunky. Now. Bear in mind, these are not Evercade issues. This is how the games were uh, back in the day. It's just a little bit messy for me.
Okay, so I'm going to show you what not to be doing here. Um, probably not run onto every screen because there's usually a bad guy waiting for you. So you probably want to tiptoe, I guess, through <laughs> your way through these levels rather than doing what I'm doing. Cause it will get a lot tougher um, as you get through the levels. Um, but yeah, this part, ideally, you do not want to step on that sort of switch, which is just on the platform at the end there. Um, so what you ideally want to do is use that kind of run and jump to the longer platform by holding down the D-pad and X, then letting go of the D-pad and you'll jump to the higher platform automatically. And obviously this is where you pick up the credits, you will need these 500 credits to get to the next stage as well. Um, but yeah, you want to drop down after you've picked up these credits without touching that um, sort of activator there. Now it's not a big deal if you do. Um, don't worry about it, but it makes it a lot harder if you actually press those, press that activator, um, which activates those turrets in the, the last screen that we were at. And yeah, if you need to sort of re-energise, don't forget to put your shield in that generator. So what I'm going to show you here is what not to do. I've just stepped over the activator, it's activated these guns in this stage here, which makes it a little bit trickier to get past. That is possible, you just have to time it right and roll on past. Okay, so as I've commented there, there's definitely an issue with the sound. If you sort of um, load in a save state, for example, the sound seems kind of muffled and very quiet. I'm not sure what's going on. Hopefully that will get fixed in some kind of patch, but it only seems related to save states, and it, it, the sound definitely seems a little bit troublesome at times. It does fix itself at points when um, some FNV come in, um, but yeah, at times it is a little bit funny. I don't really remember that happening back in the day, but I guess back in the day we didn't have save states, it didn't interrupt the flow of the game um, that way, but yeah, it's certainly a problem. I'm not sure if that can be patched, but um, hopefully it can be. It's not a major problem, but it's certainly one that was quite obvious to me. Okay, so we've basically reached the end of the first level and um, where you just need to give this uh, old guy the 500 credits and he will give you the anti-G belt so you can then jump into this hole and then it will help you survive and make the next level.
Okay, there's no doubt for me this is a very iconic game. Um, it stuck out massively back in the day. It was very cool. The The animations of the characters are fantastic. Um, it's certainly head and shoulders above a lot of things that we remember seeing back then. Really, really cool. Um, the stories are fantastic in these games. That's certainly something that shines through. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed playing through this again. Um, and actually quite chuffed that I've got further in the game than I've ever actually got. Um, thanks to the save states and and guess some guides that you can find online as well because I guess back in the early sort of 90s to mid 90s we didn't have the internet then and um, we could maybe check on some guides you had your magazines of course but I guess at the time when you're stuck there was nothing else you really could do except just trial and error but this is a really really good game okay moving on to the first of the point and click games this one is Future Wars um, Time Travelers obviously it's dealing with some time travel um, it's not massively clear what the story is all about when you start, but you'll eventually uh, unravel that as you go. Um, there's certainly a lot going on in these games. They are very clunky. Um, there are probably some kind of early examples of the point and click genre. Uh, and it kind of shows because the, the interfaces are pretty clunky to get to grip with. Um, but if you persevere, there's a decent game to enjoy here. Okay, so don't ask what the story's about in this game, I really don't have a clue. Um, even the manual doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I guess it'll make more sense once you play through the game and try and understand it. It certainly obviously deals with time travel, that's quite obvious. Um, at the start of the game you are basically a window cleaner, um, uh, or the hero as your name is um, in the game. But you actually don't know that at this point. You're obviously some kind of small time loser by the looks of it and this guy's not too happy at you at all. So at the start of the game you really just have to get yourself familiarised with the controls. There is only A and B. Um, the B button brings up this um, small screen here. And you've got different options. Uh, the main ones you're probably going to uh, use is examine. So try and examine everything that you can see. And then if you find something you can take it, pick it up, um, so to speak. Um, now, it is quite intricate, the pixels, you have to be very, very accurate with your pixels, which is kind of a, unusual for a game like this. I was kind of surprised that um, you had to be that accurate in picking things up or pinpointing certain things. But yeah, a lot of the time you're really going to use operate to activate like the, the switches on the, the scaffold in here. Um, or examine. So they're, they're the main ones you're probably going to be using for the best part. Uh, and obviously we want to try and go up there. We can see the window is slightly open. And one of the most annoying parts, which is a recurring theme through this game, is that you have to be right next to the thing that you want to operate. Um, and it's really frustrating. Sometimes you have to be so close it's just a bit of a laugh. Now thankfully in Operation Stealth, the, the sort of next game in the series, or no, not really a series, but it, the next game certainly solves that. You don't have to be right next to things. It will just automatically walk to where you want to pick up or operate. But in this game it's constantly telling you, come a little closer, you're too far away, you're standing over this and it just gets um, beyond a joke sometimes and, and just incredibly frustrating. Um, yeah, so and there's no doubt about it. This menu system is super clunky, um, and that's not an Evercade fault. We can't blame Evercade. It's basically how the game was designed. Um, and I know a lot of people probably think, would this be easier with a mouse? And I've heard it's actually not that much easier anyway with a mouse. It certainly felt okay with the D-pad. I didn't have a massive issue with that at all. It seemed fine. It moves okay. Um, I just think sometimes when you're trying to be fast um, in some sections, trying to operate a sort of keypad in a certain time frame, it becomes really, really tricky. Um, so basically at this point, 
um, you're really trying to get through the door on the right hand side if you try to get through it at this point the guy will open up um, and tell you to basically go away um, so best thing to do here is examine everything and I think that's probably the same for every sort of screen that you see examine everything, pick up everything you can possibly see because you never know that you might need it throughout the game so pick up everything take this, take that, I don't even know what they're for but just take them anyway something's going to have a use at some point through the game. So the basic idea at the start here, you need to fill up the bucket um, with water um, before you obviously need to examine everything, there's insecticide in this cupboard there's a little flag inside the toilet as well which you'll pick up automatically once you open the door and examine the flag um, but yeah, the basic thing you need to do is um, fill up the water at the sink on the left hand side in the bucket and then place the bucket on the door where the man keeps coming out uh, and basically it's a prank so then you can go through the door on the right hand side the bucket of water will fall on his head and then you can make progress to the next stage um, and then we'll take it from there So don't miss the key that's underneath this carpet here and yeah, don't stand over the carpet and then try to lift it, it just won't let it happen. So that's another kind of frustrating feature, but you'll need this key for the next screen. Um, yeah, I don't know how many people would be able to progress through this game without some kind of help. It's certainly a lot of trial and error, but sometimes it doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm not sure I would have thought automatically to fill the bucket with water to then place on the door so that it would fall over and hit the guys. I don't know. It just, I don't know. I don't think I would automatically think that's how to do. So don't be ashamed. You will probably have to refer to the, the walkthroughs that are online um, that certainly will help you make progress through the game. I don't see how you can make progress at all through this game without at least referring to these guides at some point through the game. Um, for me, I've just got stuck not entirely close some things are completely obvious which is fine but sometimes just like the last screen it wasn't entirely clear so at this point you just need to uh, operate the drawer get the piece of paper that's inside the drawer uh, and then you take that which you'll need on the next screen and then you need to use that little key that we just picked up on the the third cupboard on the sort of left there or it's probably the second one if we close the door it's the second one um, but yeah, you need to operate the or use the key on that door, which will then operate. But you need to be standing right next to it as well, or use the key to open the cupboard. You need to press the right combination of things to then reveal the typewriter that's inside this cupboard, and um, which has some kind of code on it, which you need for the next screen. And um, you want to either take a mental note or even write it down on a bit of paper because you're going to need that very soon and you're going to have to type it in very very fast okay so once you've done that and you've took note of the the code here uh, you then need to place the little red flag that you found inside the the toilet uh, on the, the left hand screen you can see here the, the map that's on the left you can see there's a very tiny blue dot and it's quite obvious that's where you need to put the flag but if you've got poor eyesight you probably might not see that which I was talking about earlier, you have to be very accurate with the, the sort of, uh, placement of the little flag. But yeah, you've got a secret passage, make your way through, but prepare to be very quick, because otherwise you're going to get stuck. 
Okay, so first off, you need to examine the little red um, number keypad, which then unreels it. Then you need to put the code in. You need to press operate every single time. So it's like 40315. Press operate, then press the button, press operate, and press the next one. And just keep going. You have to be quite quick. If you slow like I am here, you're going to die and be crushed by the, the ceiling that's coming down. It probably took me maybe five or six goes to get past. Um, but it is possible. Just be as quick as you possibly can. And yeah... Remember to use safe states as often as you can too. Okay, so that takes you to this level and there's not an awful lot of um, things to do here. You just need to use the sheaf of paper. Not what, sure why it's not sheet of paper, but um, you need to put it into the this machine here in the opening and then press the red button um, as you can see here. Now you need to be quick. Remember, whatever comes out the machine, remember and pick up those documents as well and then step on the sort of light circle that you see on the floor there. If you're not quick, you will eventually die, just like I do here. Okay, so make sure you just step on the green stuff here or you will drown in the swamp and die instantly. Also, don't approach the mosquitoes or you will die instantly. Make sure you have your insecticide ready to sort of exterminate them and they will basically go away. And don't forget to pick up the, I think there's a bit of a charm here um, at the edge of the screen before you actually move on. Um, you need to examine it first before you can actually pick up, which is just kind of frustrating. Um, but yeah, I think that's the, the thing you need to remember through the entire game. Examine everything. Don't miss anything. Take your time on each screen and try to find everything you possibly can before moving on because you could probably miss something that could affect your entire game. Um, but at this point, I wasn't entirely sure what to do. I certainly had a bit of a brick wall. But I, I think this will certainly get you through this game. Get you started, at least. It's, it's an interesting game. It's just a shame it's a little bit clunky. I think if you don't like these types of games, you're not going to like this at all. But I think it's alright. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to Operation Stealth, um, which is pretty similar. This is obviously the second game that they uh, made in the point and click genre, uh, and it kind of all works in the same way. I think they've tweaked a few things in, in the way that the sort of menu screens work and your sort of examine that. It, it, it works a little bit different, um, so to speak, but uh, I don't know if it's better or worse, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it's quite interesting. I love the stories behind these games. They're quite interesting. Um, but I think playing these games now, they certainly are very clunky to get to grips with.
Okay, so at the start of the game, it's tricky. I, I think without a guide, there's no way you'd be able to do this. Without a heck of a lot of trial and error. Um, obviously, you need your passport and you need to show this guy your passport. But at this point, you've only got a blank passport for some reason. So what you need to do is find this coin, which is in the, the uh, empty slot down the bottom, and put it back into the top slot, which will then give you the newspaper, which I guess has been planked for you. And it tells you the... Um, the nationality you need to put on your blank passport so that you can then make it through. Um, but the system used here is kind of similar. It differs in a little way where you, if you press B button and then press it again, it brings up um, different options. It's just very, very strange. I think going from Future Wars to this, it takes a little bit of... Well, it takes a little bit to get your head round because you end up keep pressing the A button or the B button in the wrong way. So it it's, it's certainly a pain... Um, to sort of operate and it's definitely frustrating um, and it makes I don't know if you probably played this first it might be different so if you press B and then press it again it'll give you the option to choose or examine something in your inventory rather than examine something on the screen if you press the A button so yeah it, it's definitely tricky to get your head around so first thing you need to do is probably uh, examine the briefcase I've definitely pressed all the wrong buttons here and tried to use something but if you operate the briefcase, sorry, it will open it up and you can then utilise all the things that are in here. Um, examine the newspaper to find out what the nationality you need to use on your passport. In this case, it says Germany. Um, so you obviously need to put German on the passport. And some, I guess it might vary depending on which, which version you use. Uh, I know if you played, played the original game, it was random at any point. It could have been uh, England or Paraguay or something. But anyway... At this point, just take everything out the um, out the briefcase here that you can. You can take the pen, you can take the the bench of notes, um, and then you can move on to the next section, which is examine the calculator thing here, uh, and that will open up the secret compartment uh, within the briefcase, which you can then forge the passport to the German um, sort of nationality that you have that you can then get through to the next stage um, of the level. Okay, so once you've opened up the secret compartment, you can uh, take your uh, unused passport and then you need to use it and insert it into the slot you can see on the left there. Uh, and that will insert it so that you can then choose the nationality by pressing the buttons on the screen. You can see the, the up arrow. If you keep pressing that till it says Germany and then press the red button and then that will print out the correct passport that you need to get through the next stage. Okay, so once you've forged your passport, you can then um, show your passport to the guard here and you'll get through, no problem. Um, now, I have to be honest, even at this early stage in the game, this is very clunky indeed. I've no idea how you would know what to do and where to go, because you, you've really only got two screens to go between, two or three screens, I guess, and it's not clear what you're supposed to do without... Um, sort of referring to some sort of guide so I'm um, hopeful this will help people get through this first stage at least and then you'll maybe get some idea how the game actually works there's certainly a lot of trial and error I guess that's what point and click games were like um, some were worse than others I guess and how their puzzles were uh, sort of created some puzzles are pretty obvious in what to do and some's just completely frustrating um, and I say this it's kind of a verges on the frustrating at times. Um, I think you're going to have to have a lot of nostalgia to get the massive enjoyment out of these games. Um, but for me, I certainly found myself getting a little bit frustrated. I certainly will persevere just like I will with Future Wars to try to get to the uh, later stages of the game and understand it. But it, it's, it's so clunky put together that... It's tough to want to play these games. I think if you don't like point and click games, you probably won't get a heck of a lot of enjoyment out of this at all. Um, but yeah, at this point in the game, you really have to go to the baggage and pick up a bag that has some more stuff for you that's been, I guess, been planked um, deliberately for you. Um, but yeah, I just find these initial screens are very, very clunky indeed.
Okay, so that brings me to my final thoughts. Now, there's no doubt Another World and Flashback are the, the two outstanding games for me. Um, frustrating at times, yes, but I was really chuffed to get further in Flashback than I've ever done before. For me, those two games are the classic games here. Um, it's great to have point-and-click games on um, Evercade, though I'm not sure these are the best examples that we could probably get. They're certainly interesting, classics of their day, Clunky then, clunky now, it doesn't really matter. Um, I think you're really going to have to have a lot of patience to and perseverance to put up with that. Um, if you've got nostalgia for them, you'll sure, sure as heck get a lot more out of the games than, than those that don't. I think it will certainly divide um, the opinion. I think a lot of people won't enjoy these games at all, but uh, somewhere in the fence, I certainly enjoyed them to a point. Um, but overall, it's an interesting cart. Um, four really interesting games. A few of them classics in my eyes, and if you're interested in this sort of thing, then I would certainly recommend it. So thanks very much for watching our video today. Sorry it was a little bit of a long one. Let me know what you think of these games in the comments, guys. And once again, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you again in the next one. Bye for now.